Cool. I, I'm sitting here with Eric Copeland in uh, his practice space. Uh, cl- it's a cluttered space. Looks like it could be creatively very functional. Um, it's broken in well. <laughs> We've been here a long time. Is it? When you say we, who who else is working in here? <clears throat> this is Black Dice. It's space. Black Dice space. Okay. Cool. We've been here maybe like eight years. Okay. Cool. I don't know how much longer, but hopefully a little bit. How many of you guys is there right now? <clears throat> there are three. Three of you. And one of them just moved to L.A., so he's not in this space. So it's just two of us down here now. You, which which guys? Your brother or Bjorn? My brother moved to <clears throat> excuse me, moved to L.A. Moved and down. Aaron okay. is still in New okay. York, so he and I get, get together still in practice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, what what are you guys working on right now? Are you, or do you have a new project you're working on? Or no, I mean we're writing, but. Kind of for, it's not like for no purpose, but I feel like we're just trying to keep like juices flowing. Uh huh. That sounds gross. Kind of. <laughs> I feel like just a couple of years ago, we realized that if we don't like uh, schedule things, yeah. oftentimes it can go to like six months and nothing's happened. And it's hard for us I to have pick a, up. I feel like I have a similar thing with my band right now where we kind of <clears> just like get together every, but you're doing solo stuff, yeah? I haven't for, I mean, I record every day and I'm down, I'm in this space every day, all day, but I didn't play shows for like nine or ten months and then just two weeks ago I did a, a tour of Bushwick, the neighborhood I live in. Okay. I did six shows in six days. In, the, in Bushwick, <laughs> that's cool. It's kind of like a, a a bad idea that we followed through on and it was a little strange, but it was cool. But I hadn't played any shows since like before Christmas. That was solo or that was Black Dice? That was solo. I okay. guess Black Dice has played once or twice. And we did this little tour. We've played maybe a handful of times this year. Cool. And when you say, um, you know, you're inactive solo, you just mean you're not playing shows. But you you, you are, I mean, you, had, you have a record pretty much every year, it seems like, right? Yeah, I mean, I usually have, I, I work all the time. I, I kind of treat it like it's a, like it's... It's not like a job, but it's. I, I work at it like somebody works on in like a painting studio where they're there every day and regardless of results, kind of thing. Yeah, so I I always have kind of finished products in whatever phase of being finished, you know. And so, but I grew I grew up like four tracking, so that's how I kind of practice music is just being like you just make ideas and you make decisions and then you see where that goes and go back and rework them you know so so you you come in here every day <coughs> and you and you record something uh, maybe not record something there i feel like it's just important for me to be here and some days i'll just listen to other people's music and, okay. but it's important for me to be here in case i feel like i do want to do something or or I get bored of listening to someone else's music, and then I'll work on something. I mean, as long as I sort of, like, turn everything on, I feel like I did my work today. And you're kind of alone in the space. Um, except for that guy. Except for that guy. And you can kind of... Oh, is that, is that your Bammy? No, no, that's... Uh, Billy's my landlord. Oh, the landlord, okay. But I see him every day, and gotcha. he's sort of, like... He kind of does a similar thing, so every once in a while we have powwows. Powwows, okay. But you're in the work environment. Every day, so that if if the if inspiration strikes, you're you're here to to to, right to to harness it. Sort of. I don't, don't think, think about it like that. I think of it like you just have to do your work, and whether your work is, I don't know, like playing music, or yeah. whether your work is being a teacher. I feel like you just kind of got to do it, and not every day is great. And but I, I I'm on a slow path, you know. Like I I've never aspired to like. For, blow, blow up or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I I get more out of music than I than I think that that I don't even know what to call it. I get a lot out of just being here. Whether yeah. anyone gives a shit, I don't care. Because it's about I, the process. Yeah, and I learn. I mean, I feel like all all my life lessons I've learned through mostly Black Dice, which is a pretty fucked up thing. But like, I learned how to be a, an adult and responsible, and yeah, how to finish ideas and have you know recognize my attitude in my work like the you know not just so not just a work process but it's really a life process based on that as as your um filter yeah and i think the more you create the more you see your 
mile markers or something. And maybe no one else does. Maybe that's the slow road is like someone in hindsight checks out sort of where you started and where you ended. And What's hindsight? That new app where you can look at butts? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, my, no, I'm just kidding. Is, my uh, phone, is, I might be the only person oh, with a phone sweet. like this. That's sweet. No. That's why your text messages have all like the, like, using... R. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> R, U, yeah. Um, well... Like Prince. Yeah, yeah. So, c- can you listen back to all your previous albums and do you really... Can you really see like the the little periods where you're, you know, how you've developed in different periods through listening back to to those? Is it is it almost like that mile marker wise? Kind of, but I don't think they're all like musical lessons. I, I feel like there are times where maybe you're more into. Uh, I don't know. I, maybe the most obvious one is maybe when you're. I feel like everybody who, maybe not everybody, but I think it's real common that when you're working, you get a skewed relationship with popularity, you know? And I think that though, that it's a real easy one to recognize when someone's like, I just want to try these ideas. And some people do it and then that's them. And that's like your Bono and you're just like successful like that. And that's how your ideas go. But, you know, like, I think I can look back and be like, I tried on that one. I tried to just like play by the rules a little bit and like bring as much <clears throat> as I've, as I wanted to bring to it, but sort of recognize it, like... Do something that you thought would be appealing to other people, you mean? Yeah, or, or, you know, I don't think anyone's naive to be like, I stumbled upon this hit Louis Louis jam, like... Right. Especially in this day and age, that naivete is just bullshit. It's right. like... Maybe back then, but yeah, not now. Yeah, but yeah. now, I, I like, to me, I, I, there have definitely been times where I've been like, I'm trying on this one, and whether anyone gives a shit or not, again, it doesn't matter, but I like the idea... I, I even like the fact that I tried it. I think that's important. And what happens when you do that? Do you feel like... Does it still filter through the, the weirdness lens that's naturally within you? Or, or do you feel like you can do something and it comes out and it's like... People are like, that sounds totally different. And pop, you know, like... I, I th- I f- in my mind, I feel like somehow it all balances out. Like, I feel like I've done things which are have a very, like, non-popular vocabulary. And... I've done things with a sort of like the opposite yeah. and I don't know. I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'm a, I make weird music and I don't feel like I make popular. Sorry, music. I didn't mean that as a pejorative. I, I yeah, no, I, I think it's sort of like kind of a given now that I think about it, that I've, that most of the shit I make is a little stranger, but when I think about it, I'm just like, I can do what I want. Like I'm not chained to any of that shit. And I like, I, I like music, you know? Yeah. And, you know, with Black Dice, it's a little different. It's like three people in this relationship. But by myself, I feel like I can do what I want. And, yeah. And walk away from it, sort of like, I, I tried something. I, it's not me. It's just like an attempt. Is that for, is that a freeing feeling? Like, as a part, <clears throat> you know, I'm saying apart from, like, Black Dice, like, for you to feel like you don't have anyone to answer to, and it, it is, the world is definitely all the way open. It's free, but it's also, I mean... It, it, for me, there's always sort of the fear that you're going to just look like an asshole, too. I, I So you do still have that, like most people have? I would think that would never... I mean, I guess it's lessened in my life, but I also feel like I've made some real sort of like, you know, stepping right in a pile of shit decisions and don't really care. And I feel like the things people like most that I've done are the things I like least. So, so who knows, you know? Like, you like get, what? Uh, I feel like Beaches and Canyons, the first Black Dice record, is one that people are always like, I love that record, and I haven't listened to it since we made it. I, yeah. I really am just like, really? I felt like that was a good good thing to do in 2000 or something, but right. I don't really give a shit about it anymore. Right. I guess I'm not embarrassed by it, but there are some ideas that I think we sort of like explored that don't, you know, that I don't care about anymore. That don't feel relevant. Yeah. What, like what? I feel like a lot of times I feel like if you're at and not I'm not saying I was but when you're at the beginning of a trend you can sort of like investigate it a little differently than when you've seen that trend go through the world so like when we were I feel like we were joking around with a lot of new age ideas at the time not that that's a joke in music or you mean in life 
I feel like song titles kind of have them, and you know, like imagery had it, yeah. and it's cool. Like, but I feel like the more I saw, I that, saw that it develop into the world. Kind of, it wasn't to me. It was something new that we were sort of like playing around in in this longer path, and then <clears throat> now I'm just like, ah, yeah, there's some dumb titles, you know, yeah, or you know, that's pretty cheesy sound or whatever, right? So. But but again, it doesn't really matter. I don't lose any sleep over it or anything. Right. You you keep chugging along, and that that's that's so far from this interview. That's what I've taken away is that just you know for myself, I mean, is that I need to start doing that, just going into the space every day, even if I don't have an idea right then and there, and just being being present in that in that space to get my body used to it. I th- I, I don't think it can hurt you. You know. Yeah. You ever see that movie uh, <coughs> about? I can't remember the title. It's a documentary about this young photographer who became very famous, very young, and ended up committing suicide. I don't think I saw that. Uh, it's like we're the Freedmen's or something. It doesn't really matter. The, the father. I'm going to quote, misquote the father, and he says something like, uh, "Like we taught her this practice where you go to the studio." Oh, you talking about the Woodmans? Woodmans. Thank I'm you. Not, her brother was my uh, teacher in, in college. I, I, I took video art, and he was my video art teacher. Woodman. Francesca Woodman is her, her name. Yeah. Francesca Woodman. Yeah. But the father says uh, something about, like, when you go to the studio, if you don't have anything to do, you sharpen pencils. Right. And when you get sick of sharpening pencils, you start working. Yes. So I have, I mean, it's not like a mantra I live by, but where do you go to school? DAP, uh, uh, University of Cincinnati, like, design, mm-hmm. art, architecture, planning, yeah. The art school. Um, <clears throat> cool, man. Yeah, that, I, I, I really, I agree with that a lot. Um, and I just, I haven't been doing it exactly. I mean, I do other stuff. I work a lot, but not in that focused, like in the space kind of way. So I'm going to get back to that intention. Yeah. Um, What's your band called? It's called Y W H Y question mark. Oh, okay. I've yeah. heard of that. Yeah. I. I yeah, it's, I, the, I remember. I mean, I heard about you guys early on, but the first time that I uh, sort of heard people that knew you, it, we had uh, we shared a tour manager in Europe, and I, I'm trying to remember who it was, but um, and it was either Gauze? It was probably Andreas. Andreas. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, Andre uh, Ansorg. Mm-mm. Uh, Tobias Stockelhaus. Tobias. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we used him for one time, real long tour. Okay, I think yeah. it was his first time actually. That makes sense. Yeah, um, and it, <clears throat> you're probably going out with. Did Christian put you on tour or with uh, 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 the uh, the uh, Jesus headquarter? Yeah, yeah. We, we worked with him. That's funny. Uh, so we went out with him, and he he said, I think it was shortly after he had you guys, like probably that same year. And he said, uh, he's like, yeah, they were very cool, but they were crazy. They, they would talk about, they wanted to give people a seizure at their shows. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it, Tobias was funny, man. That was, <laughs> I love that guy, man. Yeah. I heard he works at a zoo now. I think so. Yeah. He, he moved back to, up to, uh, up to, uh, uh, Cologne and yeah. got married and had a kid moved. And you know, I think he works at a zoo now. Yeah. Anyway, that was the that's that was the context that I had, you know, uh, one degree of separation apart from you guys. Like, okay, th- these guys must be like real heavy or something. That must like have been that. ten years ago. Eight yeah. Years ago? Oh, ten, probably ten. Mm. Yeah. How um, old are you? I'm 35. Oh, okay. You look younger. Well, thank you, man. How old are you? I'm 36. 36. Okay. Was that a thing? Were you? Would you? Were your shows like? that heavy where you your goal was to like make a stir in that way i feel, <clears throat> I feel like not to just, actually give someone a seizure but you know no i mean i i feel like we always wanted a physical presence and so you know these are our amps we have like a big wall of amps it's a lot of, a lot of fucking amps and so we like it loud and we yeah. like it heavy now i think we're exploring sort of like uh, more textures than that but I feel like for a long time it was really important to us to have like a nice sound system. Not even a nice sound system, just sort of like, like the same way when you go to, you know, like a rave or something that it's, it's like a physical presence. You kind of like can't, it's actually a pretty good analogy because there's like lights and there's music. And you bring your own lights. 
we used to employ a a, a projectionist. Okay. And then he kind of just, I think, got burned out on tour. And I, I think deep down, he probably wasn't getting a ton out of it, you know? I think he got a lot of exposure and a lot of, you know, work, but it was always for someone else. And I imagine that just, you know, he, he came with us for almost a decade, so. Wow. So now he's working on movies. Okay. Were you at, 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 at the peak, and I don't, I don't know this, because I've never been to a show, um, ha- like, were you playing pretty large shows? We've never had super big. What's the best way to put it? We've never had reliant tour, reliable tours where you're like every show is sold out. Or, right. You know that never happened for us. That being said, like in New York, it's pretty good. It's you know I feel like we've had it up to a couple hundred. Now in New York, it's usually like two to three hundred. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's totally respectable. Definitely, and, definitely. And that, and it's the same now, or was there a period where it was like, you know, more people and then it's waned a little bit? I think we had like a, a peak when when we first started getting kind of like different sorts of press, like non-punk press. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so like if, I don't know, like Rolling Stone or something. Or 05, like when, 06? What's that? In 05, 06? Oh, or, no, probably more, more like. 2002 probably with okay Bleaches right in the Canyons. beginning yeah because yeah. that was the first time i feel like we went on tour and a ton of people like we sold out la or something yeah we'd never done that before we, you know we'd only played like punk venues before so but then basically we kind of put out like the the famous like challenging second record and ever since then it, it we've kind of been like a cult so cult, that cult that, that turned off all all the uh, the sort of pretty people, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I, was gonna, I was trying to find a way to say that. Um, and and what was left were only the hardcores. Yeah, and I don't mean hardcore like hardcore music. I mean like the the heavies. I feel like what kind of happened in again, like looking back, I feel like what happened is we sort of lost all the pretty people. Had a couple down years, and now it's like this generation that's that heard about it earlier than like they knew what we were doing so they kind of caught on at a different point so now it seems like there are a lot of younger younger kids who are pretty psyched but but i don't know i mean it we haven't really like toured for two years and i don't really know what's going on out in the world yeah yeah um so you just you kind of stay here in brooklyn most of the time you're, you're here I w- last year I did a lot of touring by my or like one offs by myself I did a lot of flying and ultimately wasn't that satisfying so how, how do you perform by yourself I ha- I use the same setup as di- as I do in Black Dice but which I, is what it's just it's like a mixer and two pedals okay but with my this right here yeah okay this is new this uh, sampler is I just oh, bought it from four, a friend yeah. but so I've been using mini discs for <clears throat> years playing live and I think it was I think it was starting to like stress me out and so as backing mind. tracks yeah yeah and yeah. then you would do do vocal with the, with heavy heavy effects on top of that or whatever else you go through the mic goes through the mic it's it, kind of like that I mean it's not just sort of like hitting play there's there's sort of a, like a performance aspect to it and there's a lot of it's like source sounds that I have to kind of make correct on the fly you know yeah. it doesn't just come out like sounding great so you know and then there's I mean, some I, I, I wouldn't look at you know I, that in this day and age yeah man, i don't have a backing vocal track i'll say that exactly you know? no, i'm not I, I don't i think it's fine man i i you know my well i have a problem with that actually and it was part of why i stopped is i was like i am tired of this like it's I, this is i want to with that i just want to play play i want to yeah. play more like play music more and like have be a little looser be a little looser and a little more expressive and so i'm reworking it now because i have to start playing some more shows coming up so uh but yeah no i there's nothing wrong with it although when i see someone with a backing vocal track i frown yeah something about that is a little a little funny i mean it de- it depends if it's just like for it to sync up there's more than the vocal track being backed up in my mind you know yeah like it has to coincide with whatever the band is right doing. everybody's on click everybody's on yeah which is i mean i guess that's cool it's just not the music i want to play i, I don't do that i also so i i have my my band we don't do i mean the early days we would trigger a sample 
Like, we don't even do that anymore. <laughs> like, because I did, I, you know, if it's a one bar drum loop, then like we have to be somewhere around that tempo. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I, I didn't <clears throat> like, so we, we, we don't do that. It's just full on live, you know? Um, but I've been doing solo shows here and there where I, you know, I, I rap and I just do it with a, with a DJ, you know, mm. and it's a whole different thing, but it feels good anyway, but it is just, it's a backing track and then me rapping, but I, you know, and I used to kind of look down on that and now I'm like, eh, it's not that bad. It's kind of, you know. I like the idea that <clears throat> you can roll in anywhere and kind of do it really easily. That's what I love. I think that that's become like portable, portable. The ability to be the ability to be portable, yeah. Portable has become important to me lately. Like portable ability. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just I don't want to have to pay for things I can't afford. Yeah. You know, I'm that's, on a shoestring budget. I think that's like you know more and more these days as people are making all their money with with live shows, like yeah. they they're cutting down on expenses because you have to. You know, it's yeah. It's, I mean, it's a reality, and I don't think it's ever been easy in the rock and roll business. So, I, you know, I read all these arguments about what what's changing right now and how it's not as good, and I'm just like, what a bunch of babies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. it you have to follow whatever's happening in the in the world in terms of, um, you know, you can't fight spotify and that whole shit like you can't you can't like no that's the way of the world that like people are gonna like do w what they can to make their lives better with what technology allows and like as a musician like you know you got to kind of roll with it and do your thing you know I, w I was listening to the news the other day and it said that newspapers are obviously also on the way out and that i maybe i'm wrong my memory is but they, they they made so much money in their heyday from car advertising that they started getting into advertising cars because that's that was like their bread and butter and I was like that's that's what needs to be done like maybe you do have to play more shows maybe you have to play shows that are sponsored by telephone companies I, I would do that I'm it's where I mean, the money is unfortunately it it's a little weird I, f I feel like that's a little weird to represent these kind of companies you know um and it, the world is getting so corporatized, you know, that that is kind of, you know, they have these, I was just talking to uh, a friend of mine yesterday, and they have these Red Bull studios. Have you heard about this? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, there's a Red Bull studio in Chelsea, and, like, if you know the engineer, you, you can get in there for free and, and use this, like, world-class, <coughs> state-of-the-art studio for free. You don't even have to, like, necessarily say, like, you know, this song was recorded at a Red Bull studio. You know, it's nothing like that. You just use the place. So it's like, that's really cool to me. But like, what is, what, why? Like, what are they doing? Like, you know, the, it just feels kind of weird and dirty. I don't, Red Bull, as my understanding, isn't a beverage company. It's a marketing company. Okay. And so I saw it on a plane once. I saw a documentary. It was great. Totally informative. But it, it, the idea of it is like, it's it spends its money on creating this image. And I think the same with like Converse shoes right now. They're just like, they kind of look at what they have, which is sort of a outlaw image. And I think they just went crazy with it. They're like cowboys, motorcycles, skateboards, right. punk rock, you know, like whatever we got, whatever's counterculture, yeah. let's go there and throw a bunch of money at it. And it sucks. Like, I mean, I don't wear Converse shoes, but I've worked at the Converse studio and I'm just like, they have the same thing going on. Kind of. There's as far as I understood was like, you apply for a night in the studio with an engineer, and again, I don't think you really have to do anything, except then they'll put up on their website like, band X Someone's play. Here. I think that's kind of cool, and like, yeah, I think it's important to pay your rent. Oh, definitely, man. No, I think at this point, <laughs> like all the things like early on, you know, I definitely had. Uh, I don't come from punk music. I come from rap music, but we had we definitely had like a an ethos that that was anti any of that shit, and it was pretty straight. You know, like if someone were to ask me, like, well, would you have your song on a, on a Coca Cola commercial? I'm like, hell no, fuck no. And now, yeah, I would. <laughs> yes, I would. How much? You know what I mean? Like, and that, and that's not to say that like I've sold out or any of that shit. It's just like. 
that's the realities of life. Like, you have to make a living, and, like, you know, we don't make a... You know, I used to actually make a living off of records, kind of. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, that... it. I, mean, I didn't live in Brooklyn, you know what I mean? Like, but... I, you know, and, and I live meagerly, but that's kind of how I lived my life for a little while. Um, you know, that period's long over, of course. Uh, but yeah, what? How, how did you get into music? Let's go back to that. Like, how did you get into to doing music? I think I was just like a kid, and I got into... Where? Where did you grow up? Brunswick, Maine. Brunswick, Maine. Is that like pretty pretty uh rural no it's it's about like a half hour north along the coast from portland okay and it's uh when i was there <clears throat> there was a big navy base so okay. there was a lot of kids coming and going who had been all over the world and there's a this college boating college there it's kind of the last place like that as you head north i mean there are other cool places up there that have in the whole state's somewhat counterculture in my mind even though there's some real rich pockets it's a beautiful fucking state it's awesome and the, and the weirdest people go there to disappear and i don't think i recognize that until i got well into my 30s that i would head back and be like these people are, are, are all strange and kind of can't operate anywhere else and yeah but so i grew up there and <clears throat> so we had a college radio okay and eventually i heard songs on the college radio and kind of like it was. I feel like for me, it was you. It was like you know, you dug the songs and you dug like the humor, or something sort of like you know that you're hearing that doesn't you know I probably won't hear anymore. But I feel like when you start kind of you mean about on, in are the radio DJs, or you mean in the songs specifically? Yeah, like <clears throat> like if somebody I'm trying to think of an early example where where someone will like the first time you heard distortion, like really just right. kind of like like it, it was before Nirvana, I think. Or before, like, Nevermind came out, mm-hmm. so it was... I didn't really... By the time I heard that, I'd heard it done in this college radio thing. But to me, I was like, oh, Jesus, Jesus and Mary Chain, that's a good one. Okay. Like, yeah. I remember I listened to one of the... They played their whole record on the thing, and I was like, that's awesome. I never it, sound, it sounds completely different than anything. It did, but it still got, like, this 50s kind of songwriting mentality. I but guess I, I mean, I mean, sonically. Sonically, it totally was. And when I went to find the record, I heard it took me like four t- tries. So I had four Jesus and Mary Chain records, and I was just like, it was like this world, you know? Yeah. It, like English, you know? I didn't know shit about England. Right. Like or Scottish, I guess they're Scottish. Oh, they're Scottish. Okay. Just a lot of things like that, or small labels, or they'll like thank somebody on it, and you're like, who are the Pixies? You know? And then you started, then you would investigate that? Kind of, I mean, yeah, it was it was slow, and I feel like I listened to a lot of, like, indie music at the time, which I don't have much of a relationship with now. Like, What's indie music? Kind of like Twee or Fade. Okay. Like, I, I, I feel like when I got into music, it was really simple. Like, <clears throat> I, like I played guitar, and, and a friend of mine played, like, two drums. And then we'd switch, and I'd play two drums, and he'd play guitar. And you were trying to play, like... Twee indie song type shit? Kind of. Singing and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we thought it was a little bit different. And the kid I played with, I've, even now, I think he was a pretty good songwriter. And I learned a lot from him. But but yeah, and then I... And, then I, I, and this is high school? Yeah, maybe like right before I started playing bass for kind of no reason. I just want to play something. I didn't think I could do guitar or for some reason, so... And was your brother already doing music? He didn't do music until like his early twenties. Okay, I think maybe maybe right before twenties. But no, he he didn't play. He's always been kind of like a studio artist. Okay. Um. So okay, so he he discovered like production and stuff like that more so. No, he he was really into music, and I got I, like he's older than I am, so I feel like I learned a lot just from kind of mimicking him. You know, when I'm a kid, and then. He went away to school, uh, to college, and I started playing music with my friends kind of about the same time. So I had this kind of, this ex- couple years where I just, you know, had a four, like this really basic four track. It was like a two channel four mm-hmm. track. Learned about overdubbing, you know, like about how to do takes, about how tape deteriorates, you know, just like. As you bounce, bouncing in there, yeah. Yeah. I grew up on four tracks as well. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's. It's a good mentality. It's a thrifty mentality, mm-hmm. you know, and and it's totally. You do it yourself, and you find that, the sound, 
and because you're doing like two things, I think it's this cool relationship. I, it meant a lot to me, and it still does. The results, eh, I don't really give a shit about. You know, they're slightly like juvenile or something. Things to me. sound a little small there, I guess. <clears throat> they just are, you know, like topic or like content wise, they're totally vapid. And I, but there to me, when I hear it, I'm always like, there's kind of a seed of something in there that. Oh, you mean listening back to your old shit? Yeah. I see, I see. Because then I stopped yeah. for a long... When I started playing with Black Dice, I stopped recording myself for a long time for kind of no reason. And then got back into it maybe like 10 years ago. And I was like, I I love this. And and when you got back into it 10 years ago, what, what were you using to record? Was it then computers and stuff? No, I'd moved to Paris with, um, with Dave, who you talked to. Yeah. We were uh, trying to make a record there. And so we bought this... I probably still have it. I bought a digital... Or we bought a digital 8-track with, like... Which what? I don't know if I can take it out, but it's... I'm just curious which one of them. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see. Uh, an Alesis or something? A Lesis? I, I had a... Uh, I had a Roland um, one. A Roland digital 8-track that I used for years. From, like, I think 2001 or two until, like, 2004 five yeah something like that uh, this, see we bought that in six maybe 2006 okay. because it was cheap like yeah. it was kind of outdated and i used that for a couple of years and then it did there's no way to take it out of the machine uh except in real time track by track you couldn't like so take, you instead <clears throat> of like you couldn't bounce it onto a computer somehow no okay so every time I was trying to like go into a studio to finish something, I spent half my time and money just doing that. And I was like, "This sucks." So then I moved so on. So to- and even to, even to line things up, you had to you had to like just do it manually. Yeah, I mean, I was like the guy who did the click at the beginning. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The, Same here, man. I, I yeah, it. exactly. I, I would do one snare hit. Yeah, yeah. And copy that to every track. So and then you got this thing. What is it? And then I got an ADAT. Well, I borrowed it from a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it sounds amazing. Those are cool. Great. I like those. But then I was just like, I, I just never had a computer. And yeah. then one of the Black Dice guys dropped one off down here. But it's cool. like a 2004. Yeah, that's I, old. I just play with Cubase. That's old. <clears throat> yeah, it's old, but it kind of does what I want, and mm-hmm. I really just use it the same way you would a. Uh, a reel to reel. I mean, I do slight like EQing, or mm-hmm. but I can't put effects on in there. I have to run it out. And you don't edit much e- either. I edit. That's you actually edit. yeah. That's kind what's of the main key thing. on computers to me. That's you a good point. Chop and move stuff. And that's sort of the. I feel like do, being able to edit is like the main time eater in a studio because I have to take it somewhere to. Like my monitor monitors are four tens, so they're okay. totally deceptive, you know. Yeah. And so I take it to this friend of mine who I've been working with for years, this guy Rusty Santos, and he's totally got my back, has a good ear for what I do, and but I don't want to sit there and edit with him. I just want him to do what he's really good at. Oh, so he edits the stuff. No, no, I'd edit it because yeah. I don't want to do it with him. Okay. Not that he couldn't, but he's really good at just kind of like finding this sound and making things sort of like relate like making the sound sort of like push off each other like mm-hmm. like like air pushes off each other i think yeah. he's got a really good ear for that so carving out the space or whatever totally mm-hmm. so a computer is just like a time saver a money saver but i i i'm not in like i'm not in that world at all i okay. don't understand yeah that's cool man i'm, I'm i feel like uh I've gone in, in a bit of a time machine in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. I mean, this is what we listen to music on. Yeah, man. A cassette. That's awesome. I should have brought my... Uh, I, had, I just put out a cassette in May. I, I should have brought you one. Um, so, but let's go back. So you're in in early high school. You're in, you're in a quote-unquote indie band, whatever. You're playing, doing s- stuff that's like written songs and stuff. What took you into way way more experimental directions? I, you know, it, to me, it was sort of like a real, like, what's it, binary thing. It was like either kind of like light music or heavy music. And eventually, I just was like, you mean you mean soft and loud? Or kind you, of, yeah. I mean, really, or just, mo- you mean melodic and dissonant? Kind of. All yeah. these things. Like you're just a kid. You don't understand nuances. And I, I did not. I was like, there's music my parents listen to. And there's music my parents wouldn't listen to, you know, like maybe not quite that basic, but 
so I started fucking around with like other sounds, just like you know, like distorted bass or something. You know, something really basic, nothing yeah. that clever. And then when Bjorn and I started playing, he was just like, I, I just kind of want to make. It wasn't like scary, but he's just like, I just want to make this other thing, and I was like, all right, that's good, you know. I, 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 he was living in Providence, and I was still at my parents' place. So I would go down and kind of play these shows and practice. And it was, it felt like kind of grown up to me. You know, you're just a kid, and you get to, like, drive down by yourself a couple hours mm-hmm. and drink beers and smoke weed. And, and that, <clears> was more, that was a little more out, what you were doing there? We started kind of as like a, th- we didn't start, but I feel like by the time we were playing shows, we were kind of like a thrash band. It was like real fast and. Was thrash like hardcore? Like. Kind of, but it wasn't like, like chugga chugga or something. I feel like it was a little more like linear oriented songwriting. It, it was like real fast, real short, like 12 mm-hmm. minute, 20 minute sets. And yeah, but it was. Diff- you know, it was like a totally different world for me, and it was, but it was cool, like, because I feel like in Providence at that time, that that was like a fun time. To we're be we're in the time. early nineties at this point, mid nineties, mid nineties, yeah. yeah. And and w- that w- was there hardcore moshing and crazy like it slam like, dancing. You know, it was like it, it was an art school, so it was kind of the yeah. same where it's like it is, but then you know, people are just funny. And is that RISD? Yeah, okay. he went to RISD. And so there's... It just felt like there's a thing I'd never seen before, but you kind of imagine what that thing would be. Like, everyone's heard of a warehouse party, but, that, you know, this was, like, the first couple I'd been to, and I was just like, these are really strange. Like, there are, like, super hot chicks here, and there are, like, fucking old men here, and there are just, like, high school kids like me here, and... I don't know. It just it was it it was thorough, you know, and it was totally new for me, and and so to me it was like that was a world that I was participating in. That I feel like then when I went when I started touring and stuff, that was what we sort of brought and sought, you know. So you brought that <clears throat> you brought that into the touring, and you played in places like that on tour. Yeah, because I feel like that was. I mean, again, uh, there. I'm sure there are many different veins that I didn't know about, but to me it was like, there wasn't so much of like a punk scene as there was like a hardcore scene. And that had a lot of rules that I just didn't give a shit about. Like I was into getting wasted. Because like, a lot of them were straight edge and stuff, you mean? Just Yeah, and I felt like they were, it was like a culture that dissected things I didn't understand. Like I didn't give a shit about their heroes and, and things like that. Who, who you talk, like Shelter? Are we talking about those kind of bands? Like, I mean, we are because I avoided that shit because it just sounded uptight to me. And, yeah. I, and I never really liked the music. I never really got into that sound. I mean, even Black Dice stuff, I probably wouldn't have picked up myself, you know? Like, wasn't... And yet you, you made it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm mostly... I grew up on, like, my parents' radio, so it's like, 50s, like, doo-wop, and it's still kind of my base like that's sort of my foundation like i like reggae that sounds like duo or like yeah and i like a lot of stuff i mean but i like nice sounding music i don't really get into like that other that other world because it seems just fucking dark to me yeah I, I i i also struggle with with uh stuff that's too yeah that's too like screaming at me yeah, my yeah. wife calls it hysterical. And yeah, whenever she says it, it's like oh, it's true. It's totally hysterical. That's- I have trouble with hysterical music. That's a good way to put it. Now I'm going to say that instead of screaming at me. I think it makes a lot of sense, and I feel like you can apply it to a lot of a lot of um, deliveries. Like it doesn't have to be screaming. Sometimes, like I'm trying to think of someone who I've picked, like Nicki Minaj is a little hysterical mm-hmm, to me. Mm-hmm. I'm just like. Yo, just calm down. Relax. But then you say, like, old dirty bastard, and you're like, he's hysterical, or, you know, and gets away with it. Yeah. Like his thing. Yeah. Uh, So, have you ever tried to make something that was more in the vein of that 50s stuff that you like? Yeah, I feel like I, I, to me, I always hear it, like, I like major chords. Yeah. I like the minor fifth, because Louie Louie uses it. Uh You know, like, these are things that aren't. 
I'm not into advanced songwriting. Yeah. I, I like a real simple groove. Yeah. And now, the, and now the longer I do it, it's it. I feel like I'm just finding these like longer moments of that stuff. You know. Is your newer stuff? I don't know your whole catalog, unfortunately. Is your newer stuff more in in that in that vein? I feel like lately it's, I've been doing stuff on dance labels, so it's kind. Of, it's, okay. it's actually I don't consider it like. I mean, you know, like I don't know how it would participate in a DJ set. You know, like I don't feel like it's it coheres enough, but it makes sense because I'm kind of into the, like those sounds. I'm into the relationship of repetitions. Mm -hmm. I'm into like numbers and how they like maintain their integrity in a relationship against other numbers, mm -hmm. you know, so that your your mind sort of wanders between things. Interlacing rhythms in, in, in certain ways. Yeah, yeah, I'm into like rhythms being melodies and melodies being rhythms, you know, like the things I like the most, I feel like they're like that. Something you could put on, it's pretty like easy to listen to, but there's some depth to it. And I think with that depth, maybe you can like reapproach it a couple times. Mm -hmm. What stuff you're listening to nowadays? Uh, I I've, I've for about like four or five years, I've just almost only listened to music from uh, New Orleans. I just really, I just feel like I caught a bug, and I like <clears throat> Zydeco shit. No, I feel like more like like late fifties to like seventies, kind of when. So like funk comes about, but there's still like the like, meters, this kind of thing. Like the meters, okay. or like I got really into Doctor John, uh -huh. who my wife says is hysterical. Okay, he's a little hysterical, yeah. I got re like, but I feel like with that world, it's real easy to just kind of fall into it. Where you're like, well, there's this studio, and the studio uses engineer, and this engineer worked. It, it's just such a small community that it's it's like. You mean you can get into the, the the drama of remembering the past and thinking about how um, like the reggae scene is like that if you think about Studio One and all that yeah yeah I and mean, that's all interesting stuff I mean there's a lot of scenes that are like that I guess you know if you and, the, and it's totally romantic to me yeah. you know like and then you know it's historically kind of relevant New Orleans at the time just like JFK stuff and yeah Easy Rider you know it just seems I got really so anyways that's a good movie. It, I just watched it recently. It is good. It's darker than I thought. It's real dark, yeah. I saw that once, and then I saw it a second time, and the second time it, it clicked <laughs> in a big way for me. Um, I was on pot the second time when I watched it. <laughs> it's probably as it was made. Exactly. That's exactly right. What's your process when you're recording? Is Is it really the same... Like, are you doing things exactly the same way that you would live? No, no. I, I, with recording, I like multi-tracking. I like finding, you know, like, it, it, playing live, I, I try to distill it to, like, this is what the song is about. Like, these three or four things, the tops, you know, sometimes it's just, like, this one thing. That's yeah. the song. So I don't, in here, in my studio, I feel like I try to do what I want. So I'd use drum machines, which I would never bring on tour Why? live I just don't want to yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bring anything I mean yeah and I deal to be honest I'm, I didn't grow up with hip hop it's like it's still a world I know so little about yeah. but I'm always like that's right they just showed up with a bag of records yeah you know? I, something about that man but you know I, and I've only been to a few hip hop shows or seen anybody do it live and I saw uh, this dude Danny Brown yeah, at some festival yeah I've liked a song or two of his. He seems yeah. like a funny character and shit. But and he, <laughs> I, but he got up on stage. It was really early in the day, granted, and he was just like, "I'm tired." We're like, "That sucks." But his DJ didn't have a, a like a cut, an ability to cut fast. Yeah. So he was turning the knob. So all the times he was cutting something out, it was just like this kind of slow fade. Huh, huh. And I was just like, "This sucks." Yeah. But. I, it made me bum that they had it so easy in this minimal way, and then they, they still didn't have their shit together. I think they. I mean, I think they have their shit together, but it was just it was like missing something that made it tight, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I guess that's. I guess that's the like. I couldn't. You know, I couldn't spin a record tight. I, I mean, I think it, it comes down to to me, and you, you know, you're talking about really the technical stuff and the DJ. But to me, if if a if a rap show works or doesn't work, it comes down to the energy of the of the rapper, really, and the you know, because that's the person that's kind of on spotlight. You know, I mean, the DJ obviously has to do their job, but 
you know, to me, that's more of like a just getting your, your technical shit together and having it, being able to play the tracks. And, you know, I mean, there's definitely a difference between a good and a bad DJ, but it's about the charisma of the of the lead singer, of the lead rapper or whatever. And that's why um, that's why you can do it so minimally is it because it's really just like, you know, you could, you know, in the old days, it would be like, you know, Dylan Thomas or something you know, performing his poetry in front of an audience and it works or it doesn't work, huh. you know? And that's the way I see it. And and so the... the And of course, you know, and that's my take on it, but obviously a big part of it is also the danceability of the tracks. I, but, you know, you kind of picked up I just, like... The dude said he was tired a bunch. Yeah. That's hard to follow. That's whack. Yeah. It's like apologizing on yeah. stage. I, I yeah. feel like I've always been like, never... Yeah. Never apologize. Yeah, you like, have to bring it. Like even if, even if you you feel tired, the moment you go before you go on stage, once you go on stage, you're you're, you're passing a threshold into <laughs> invincibility and like a, you know you're you're you then become a shaman or whatever. You have to take on some other spiritual uh, responsibility in that room. I never thought of it that way. But you might be right. I think that anyway. <laughs> I don't know no, people say all this stuff. I, I'm always, I'm always impressed how, how other people talk about their music. I, I just think that that you know, otherwise it's like, why am I looking at you? You know what I mean? Like if, if you if you don't somehow um, have something that to say and and urgently enough that. Um, you know that that you can do it without saying I'm tired or something like that. Then then, you know I mean whatever. I'm not saying you have to completely sever all ties with reality or something, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying put on some sort of. I, I I feel like I have a little more selfish attitude. What's your What's your attitude about it? I feel like when I go on stage, I try to find it. I just I I know what you're talking about, yeah. but I, I I'm always like I I don't want to think about them. Yeah, because I'm I'm thinking about finding this place where it's like you're in the pocket, the sounds right, yeah, the like pressure's right, your voice is right, like you can feel like something in the room, and I never. But I'm, that's focus. That's focus. That's meditation. That's spiritual. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. But I guess I don't think of it. I, I think a lot of people just have a, a healthier relationship with, with, like giving on stage and to me I feel like to get to the point where I have that mentality is I, I don't I, I'm starting the sentence weird I don't see that as <clears throat> where I'm going I see it as like I'm here to it's not like a presentation but I'm just like this is what it is you all happen to be here and you happen to be watching me well and I'm who I am when I'm on stage and when I'm off like I'm not uh I'm not the like life of the party. Right. I, I never have been, but I feel like I'm a I'm a good person, and mm-hmm. I try to be. I, I good to my friends. Try to be good to strangers, you know. And so that when I'm up there, I'm just like I'm. I'm not performing for you guys. Like we're gonna go through this. I hope. Yeah. If you want to go, that's cool because I would leave a lot of things. You know, no no harm, no foul. But but I do. But like, you're there. You're there, and and <clears throat> you're there in earnest and honestly searching and focusing that's what i'm saying like that's that that in and of itself being present in the moment is what i'm really talking about i guess you know more so than you know i I can say yeah crossing over into some shamanism that's obviously (laughs) a little bit inflated but you know yeah what i'm really talking about is being in the moment I i hope i am i mean i i i don't really like think on those ideas too much that's good you shouldn't you should just do I, I I tend to I feel like there's there's a lot of information out there and I try to just yeah. be like it's important when it's important when it's not important it's not important to me you know yeah because then we we should all be doing better we should all be saving the planet more right so did did you guys now Dave said that this is Dave um, from Animal Collective and AB Tear. Um, he said that you guys brought them out on their first tours, Animal Collective. Mm-hmm. Did you guys meet them here? Yeah, Dave and I went to college together. Okay. 
and we had a <clears throat> I think that's here. Yeah, I think maybe he had booked a show for us at NYU where he was going, and then he and I had a class together, and he, I. Let me think. He lived across the street from where I worked, so he would come in like when I was closing and drink beers and listen to records and stuff. And then I think maybe he, he. I feel like they recorded. They were. I don't. They had like some performance thing. I don't remember seeing. And they had a record recorded, and we were like, "Why don't you play a show with us?" You know, because they were friends, and they sort of like to do what we did, which mm-hmm. wasn't like going out to bars or anything. You know, I. Was, Which was what? What? Did, how did you guys hang? You know, just like listening to records or at people's houses. Yeah, going to show like I don't know, smoking some pot maybe. I don't know. Just it just it was an easy easy friendship, and they were around and they were close and stuff. And their record was cool. You mm-hmm. know, their first record's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and then yeah, we were going out and we we invited them. And you already had the like a record deal and stuff at that point. We we never really had deals. We just we had records out. We'd been a band probably for like I don't know four years. Yeah, at that point, and we toured a couple times and and playing like warehousey spaces and stuff. Those are more like punk clubs. Okay, and then I feel like when we were taking them out, it was more like warehouses or spaces. It's, yeah. It started going more towards that. Um, yeah, 2001, I think. We took them out twice. I can't remember when the first one was. But it was the 2001, I remember, because I graduated in 2001 and we left, like, five days later or something. Okay. And did, like, all these years later, or when you started to see them you know, like, blowing up and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure you were happy for him and everything, but did, did any part of you feel like, you know, you wish you could be in that position as well? Uh, you know, it's, it's, not like they, it's not like they were making... I mean, maybe their song structures were a little more pop if you, you know, really get down to brass tacks about it, but, like, they were still making challenging music. They, we took them on this one tour where they were playing... Um, like a lot of record, a lot of songs from uh, Feels, I think it's called. And I felt like I was like these guys, like turned a corner, and and into more popness. Yeah, and just like delivering the goods, you know, like they can do it. Like I mean, I'm I don't see a lot of music anymore, but every time I see them in like a big venue, I'm just like fuck yeah, you know, like they they know when to drop the beat, they know mm-hmm. when to like turn up the panda bear like they they right. know what they're doing Th- that being said like I, we never wanted to get less popular because that was what was happening to us at the time it's <laughs> yeah. like like your friends are getting you know like a lot of a lot not of, just them but you must have had some other friends that were in in bands that were doing really well too at the time right yeah i mean yeah i think more than that though like our shit was sort of deflating at the time so it was a little like, you know, we we work hard and all that stuff, and but it was a little kind of like disheartening because we did a lot of tours that were really fucking tough, had a lot of like really bad receptions, a lot of like aggressive sort of like naysayers. I don't know. What so, the fuck is this? Yeah, or just like you were better before, or like we lost a member, so there's a lot of like you should have kept your drummer, and you're just like fuck off. You know, like yeah. we're st- I and I like those records. I think we explored this like type of music that I'm really happy we did, and and I, I. But I never. As as they're getting more popular, I feel like when I went to their shows, I didn't enjoy them. Like I don't want to be in a hall like that. You didn't enjoy just because of the environment. Yeah, and I didn't enjoy their fans. Like I feel like they're young and. So a lot of times when I'd see them, I'd be like, me or Black Dice were opening for them. And, you know, these kids don't want to have, like, 45 minutes of what we do, right. which is fine. You know, if I was their age and into Animal Collective, I probably wouldn't either. And I think the band was trying to make a nice gesture, being like, you guys should check this out. It's it's cool, or you might get into it. But I, I like my experiences a little smaller. So it, they're the only, like, 
kind of bad feeling was I feel like I lost some friends to popularity. Like, so you 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 feel like you you mean you lost the Animal Collective guys as friends? No, 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 not at all. I mean, I sort of lost my experiences watching my friends play like these great shows. I it's see. Because you enjoyed what you preferred to watch them in small environments. It was just like intimate, and I think yeah. they were bringing some like really amazing stuff to a pretty intimate audience who took a lot away from it. And that's why they blew up. <laughs> and that's why they blew up. But the, when I think when you see somebody giving what they give to an audience that's licking it like an ice cream cone, it's a little different. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it, that experience to me was like, all right. And, and, and then I think what Too happened, spoon fed in a way or something. I think they just wanted the like saccharine yeah. of it instead of the other things, which I think they explore really well too. Yes. Some like deeper ideas or content. And then I think what happens to almost anybody in that position is like when you're, when you're, stage is that big you adapt to it so i think some of the things i liked before where it was like really intimate and there would be some challenging moments but mm -hmm. they kind of like took you through that to get to this nice part like i understand why that wouldn't be successful on a stage right. if you're playing 160 200 shows a, a year right like that doesn't feel good you know that's it's like a really bad feeling to feel like you're giving something great and this huge audience is just like, we don't want that. Right. We want this. So, so they, they were somehow guided a tiny bit by the situation they were in. I, I think it's like what everybody works with is you're always struggling with your situation. And sometimes you step up to the plate and sometimes you're resisting it. <clears throat> theirs is an ongoing thing, you know, but I feel like there's, I, th I think as when you're given the opportunity to be more successful in that in that way where it's like you can have a ton more people at your show you can support yourself you can quit your day job whatever like i don't i don't fault anyone for like learning that lesson mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know did you did you ever feel there was a point where you could have done that with a few little tweaks like you could have gone there but you decided not to or do you feel like you wouldn't have really even known how to enter into that world yeah and i don't mean what they're doing now i mean like when it first started to happen obviously right now they're ginormous and it's kind of like yeah no one i would have no idea how to make that <clears throat> i don't know i mean i've i feel like i've always tried to make pretty honest decisions so to me like w when when people liked our first record you know, and we were working with different labels and stuff, and people are like, we can't wait for the second one. We hope it's like this. And we're just like, that's cool, you know, but that's not what, it's not where we're going, you know. We're like, un unfortunately, it, it, it wasn't, it's not even like it's that much of a decision. It's just like the process doesn't, didn't bring us close to there. So it was like a million little decisions you make to avoid doing the same thing. So it's not like you had some sort of thing like, oh, everybody, you like this? Fuck you. We're doing this. It's part of me. I mean, yeah. that, that is part. Of, yeah. I think it's part of everybody. And, like, you know, some people, that's that's their total, like, modus operandi. Yeah. And they succeed at it, you know? And I don't know how they get away with it. And some people... Like who? Who's an example of that? Can you think of anybody? Johnny Rotten, maybe? I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to go really obvious. I was going to say Genesis Purge, but he seems a little more, like, pure at heart. Just like Genesis who? From Throb and Gristle. Okay. See, I, these are, I'm not, I didn't grow up with punk or anything like that, so I don't, I don't know any of these. Genesis Purge is kind of like a institution of somebody who seems like they're incredibly bright, incredibly, like, focused, and really in their own planet. It, to, to be applauded, but it's, it's, I feel like there's something slightly frightening going on the whole time which mm -hmm. I applaud applaud him for yeah. her. but Johnny Rotten's an easier one where you just like seems like the dude like saying fuck you on stage right. that's cool you know that's his thing and he's been successful at it he's that guy in my mind but he's still giving people what they want but maybe that's what they want from him isn't it right <laughs> I don't I don't know but that's it's not my entire like thing in life but yeah. I feel like to be able to like be courageous or to make hard decisions i you know you kind of have to be like defiant 
are just like blinders. Just I feel like I I try to keep deaf ears to what other people say because mm-hmm. it's it's a weird you know it fucks with your head. I think it's like being a, an athlete or something. You know, if someone says you're the best or yeah. What do you do? Have you have you gotten like reviews that you read in the past that were like scathing or something that that? Oh yeah, we had a Black Dice had a one in the Village Voice. It was really like hurtful because I feel like we're a local band. You know, we'd been here a long time, and they basically just said we had like no ideas. And I feel like I've gotten that once or twice where it's like that. That's the wording like no ideas. How do you treat that? You know, like. Do you will you will you try to respond to the writer ever, or you just kind of try to let it? I always take it we, out of your mind. We have it hanging in here, with the village voice yeah. like somewhere, and I was like, I should know who this dude is because one day I'd love to kind of have that, not for any reason other than just to be like, you're that guy who wrote it. All right. What would you say to him if you ran into him like at a freaking show in Brooklyn? I have no idea. I mean, yeah. probably nothing. I I don't think I would care too much anymore, but like. That was one that that was just kind of felt like a slap in the face. Yeah. And but now in this day and age, I feel like I don't. It seems like being critical is very easy, and it's easy to find criticism if you want it. Yeah. It's probably as easy to find somebody saying something nice too, and ultimately, like neither matters so much to me. Yeah. It, one if feels you're better. You're pretty focused. You one have... feels better. Well, of course, of course. <laughs> but it's, that's not what it's about, anyway, though. It's about no. the process. It's about coming in, doing you know, spending your time and 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 I like my music. Like yeah. I, 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 when I'm done with something, I'm like, fuck yeah, yeah, that's better than my other stuff, and I like it more than other people's stuff. Right. Like that's really important to me. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't feel like participating in a gang or something. I, I like, like feeling like I did it. I'm satisfied with Black Dice too. I mean, that's like a. That's like a family, so it's a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you, do you, or let's close up in a sec. Uh, but do what would you say? Do you, do you have any goals for the future or things that you'd like to do? Um, any any things you haven't explored that that some, you know you'd like to explore one day with different mediums, maybe even you know. I'm writing a book right now. Okay. And I'm I, I I mostly want to try to not rely on touring as much. I mean I like it, but it's it. My you know I have like a wife and I want to have a home and maybe a child and stuff. And I'm I'm kind of getting to that point where I I I want to be able to live my life. Stay put, kind of. Yeah, and, and I I live a very meager financial existence. That I mean, no one needs to cry for me, but. I still work jobs, you know. I don't. I don't live off music by any means. And did you ever? There. I mean, there. There are years where I can, and there are years where I'm. I can't, and there. You know, it comes and goes somehow. And I'm grateful for that. Like I, I've, I've got a. I've been in New York almost twenty years. I've got a really good hustle. I know how to like the last three days of the month like figure it out yeah you know and i don't think i could have done that staying in maine i think i would have gotten a normal job and had that that what's it called security Mm -hmm. which i can't fault anyone for doing i but at at this point i'm just like i i would like it to change i would like to be able to make music the same way i do make a small existence for myself and i and i just keep busy i mean i don't think of myself I, I work on like art stuff and mm-hmm. i'd love to work with movie stuff although that seems really challenging it's a lot yeah it's just it's it seems like it's a lot of collaboration like you got to work with a lot of different people to make it work and well not even like movie but even just like film or video like i just i've tried it on my own and i just it's like i don't understand that language i don't understand like how you can frame something so slightly different and it looks nicer than the way I would do it right. instinctually, which just looks exact like nothing more than the sum of its parts, you know? Right. So I try to stay busy like that, just working on being creative. Yeah, you're an, you're an artist through and through in terms of your... I, I never call myself an artist. On the landing card, I, I call myself a musician, but I'm always like, I'm just 
like any other dude. I just work on stuff and yeah, but that's what an artist is. You you thrive on that on expression. I guess I I just don't know what else I would do. I mean, I'm at that age, much like yourself, where your resume sucks, right? And you look in, into the like. Oh yeah, I can never get a real stuff. job if that's what you mean. <laughs> no, I mean I I I do mean that. Yeah. <laughs> it would yeah. be awful. Yeah. And and if I have to, I will. You know, I'm not like afraid of the work or anything. And but I, what it would mean is at age 35 for me, you know, starting at, at as you know, assistant manager at Chili's or something. You know what I mean? Like what? Or just starting as a waiter at Chili's and then working my way up to yeah. assistant manager um, or whatever. You know what I mean? Because at 35, and I, I you know, because I don't have a. a yeah, I don't have that history of any kind of work, so... No, I've got, like, no credit. Yeah. No... I didn't finish college. You You've know? got no college degree? Yeah. My college degree is useless? Yeah. So there's... I don't know. But, but so, hopefully it won't come to that. I, I like to think that, like, we all participate in a community where that community splinters off into, like... Like, for instance, you could probably get a job as assistant manager at, like, a vegan restaurant. Right. You know, and maybe right. that would bring you to uh, not, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm free, I'm here. freestyling here. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like, I, I like to think that it, if I stopped playing music, it would be because I was obsessed with something else. Right. Which would be equally as, like, non-participatory with the straight world. Which, yeah. Which, you know, may, may happen. I have no idea. Maybe I don't know. I I always love the idea that of those people who just make their money, but then they have this life where they're like, I own real estate. Right. I just like fuck, man. How do you own real estate? Like, right? Where do you? Split? You have to get to a point where you can afford to start buying real estate. Yeah. No, I, I've I've known people like that too, and then they don't do anything anymore. They just kind of chill if they want. And I don't ever see myself chilling. I mean, I, I it's hard to like get me to stop working usually. Yeah. And, or like go on vacation. I feel like every summer my wife and I are like, we're going, we're doing something, or we're at least going to go to the beach. And every summer, the end of August, we're like, fuck, we didn't do anything this summer. You gotta get that in. You gotta get that R and R in. We're, well, we're planning on moving, so we're going to the place. We're planning on moving to this island in Spain, so we're taking a vacation. Really? Wow. What island? Mallorca. Oh yeah, I t I, I went to Mallorca. Um, I, I, I did a, uh, um, like a woofing trip, you know, like work, workers on organic farms trip oh. when I was like 19 or 20. And, uh, we, we first, we started off in Mallorca did working at this lady's place. Ah. Beautiful, beautiful island. See what well, I've been to, we took our honeymoon in a, a different one of those islands called Formentera. Okay. It's really small and it was awesome, but I'd never been to Mallorca and so we kind of, we were planning on moving in like three weeks, and then at some point I was just like, "Listen, I'm just stressing out. Like, we don't have the security to like go there and come back. You know, like mm -hmm. that. This is an all or nothing move. Let's. We well, have to get a visa or something, though. I no. The short the short answer is no, but she needs to figure something out for um, here because she only has a green card. Oh, she's not American. No, she's from Spain. I see. Okay. So she, so we're, she's going to apply for citizenship so that we can take care of it because it's important for us to come back here, you know, at some mm -hmm. point. And like, I have a, a, a niece and family here. And so I want to make sure that we don't have problems at a border ever, yeah. you know? Yeah. So do it right. Yeah. yeah. So we're taking a vacation. The first one, like we've taken in forever going for a week over there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh man, that's exciting. That's exciting. I think so. I mean, I've been here almost 20 years, so I'm having some, like, real separation anxiety. Yeah. I feel like... It's going to be... A, it's a whole different life. I mean, you're in freaking the, the, the heart of Gehenna. You're in the you're in the <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, deep in the uh, whatever, and you're going to go into this, like, uh, you know, people-free zone, almost. That's not true. Mallorca... So, here's how it is. Mallorca is... Um, it may be different because your wife's Spanish, but... When I was there, and I wasn't like a tourist, but they were really, really, a little weird with tourists, you know. Just I think it's one heavy of those places, tourist place. extremely touristy. So the 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 people that lived there, which we were trying to get in with like 
the people that live there, it's civilians, you know what I mean, trying to, you know, hang out, talk Spanish, and you know, mm. and like they didn't weren't really feeling us, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope it's not like that, but I I do. We're trying to move to the city there, though. Okay. So in this one way, I'm hoping it's just like any other European city where like there's a lot of people. It's the city of Mallorca, yeah. <clears throat> you know, Palma de Mallorca. Palma de Mallorca, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we were outside of that, but. But yeah, so we're gonna go check it out and just like eat some good food. And nah, man, it's beautiful. You're gonna swim. love it. You'll love it. Yeah. I, I we, yeah, I, I'm hoping that I, I can. I, but I am having like total. Separation you may miss. Anxiety. You may miss the uh, concrete jungle a little bit. I just ha- haven't. I mean, even when I'm here, it's because it's you know everybody hates New York when they're here as much as they love it. But it's just I, I'm always like, how does how does one get something done when? I don't know. How do you do it when you're not here? Right. Good um, question. Good question. Everybody does though, and they, and most people live healthier, better lives. I'm sure you know, like outside more. And... Yeah, that's that that's appealing to me. Some point, and, I, and the, for some reason, the beachiness is is appealing to me. It's like it's like clean. It's open. It's like that salt air. Like something about that appeals to me. A Where lot. are you now? I'm in Cincinnati. Oh, you're still there? Yeah. So, well, I lived in the Bay Area for, <clears throat> for a decade. Oh, okay. And then moved back to Cincy in 2010. Ah, uh, and that's, is that right across from uh, Kentucky? Mm-hmm. I played the Southgate house? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, we used to play there a lot. That's It closed down, or they, it kind of changed management or whatever. But, um, yeah, man, that's that's Cincinnati. It's not a bad place. No, I I kind of have been getting more into the the Midwest. It, I I don't know why, but recently it struck a chord. Like Pittsburgh, I really like, mm-hmm. and Detroit I, I, is kind of a special place. Yeah, except Chicago, I still just can't get into Chicago. Yeah, I've never really gotten into Chicago either. It's, it seems impenetrable for some reason to me. It's it's big and and blocky, kind of like New York in a way, but without. A certain amount of the appeal to, for me. I don't know why. I never have a visual reference. Like, I need a, a, a river or a fucking big tower or something. Mm-hmm. And, and there, I, I'm just like, I could be in any part of Chicago. Yeah. I, I mean, no they idea. have the lake up north, but... That's true, actually. That was stupid yeah. of me. They do have the lake. Yeah. But, anyway. Cool. I, I've been sitting here with Eric in, in his studio. I'm going to sign off. And uh, let's take one more photo, if that's all right. All right. Cool. Say bye to these people. Bye. Thank you.